Okay, let's work on some examples on page 17. Um, this practice, the first one, is asking for drawing a molecular formula, line band structure, and a skeletal structure for the following compounds. Uh, I'm not going to work on all of it. I will leave uh, some of them for you to practice. Um, let's work on, I would say, C and D. So on C, C is giving you a condensed formula. So we are going backwards from condensed formulas to to line bond and skeletal structure. So you see we have CH3 groups in the parenthesis. So we use them as branching out of this carbon. And also three CH3 groups that are branching out of this one. So let's build the two carbons first. And then we have three CH3 groups around this carbon. use it as CH3 backwards because it shows that carbon and carbon are bonded to each other okay so you leave the hydrogens away from the bond and here is the CH3 so so far we have built this side plus one carbon there are three more uh, CH3 groups so you will put them here so you can consider it as line bond uh, normally, you don't have to open all the CH3 groups, so you're, you're fine. You can consider it as line bond structure. Now, how to change it to a skeletal st uh, structure? Uh, first, determine the longest chain. You have one, two, three, and four. So, build a zigzag of four uh, carbons. One, two, three, and four. Where are your methyl groups? on the second and on the third. So if it's confusing, go ahead and number your carbons first, and then the methyl groups. One here, one here, one here, one here. You may ask if it is okay to put these to the same place. Yes, at this point, we're not talking about the exact location, so you can put the methyl groups, one on top, one on the bottom, or both of them on the bottom, both of them are top, uh, it's not a big deal at this point. Uh, let's also work <coughs> on part D. These are good examples, that's why I picked them. I believe A and B are easier to work with, so I leave them on you. CH3, CH2, 3. CH3, let me drop double check. CH3, CH3, CH3. Okay, all right. So when we are going to draw the line bond structure, we have a CH3, right? CH3. Then we have a CH. And what is hanging out from this carbon? A CH3 group, right? Because don't forget, CH3 in parentheses shows. The branch. What does CH2 in parentheses show? Means the length of the chain. Means repeat CH2 groups three times. So we have CH2, CH2, CH2. All of them are hydrogen. And a CH3. So one more time, let's double check. Do we see CH3? Yes. Do we see CH? Yes. Do we see CH3 as the branch here? Yes, there it is. And do we see three CH2 groups? Yes. One, two, three. And at the end we see a CH3 group. It's time to draw the skeletal structure. So let's count the carbons in the long chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a zigzag 
of six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't forget, I told you, carbon atoms are shown at the end of the lines or in the angles. So let's see, we are not supposed to show any carbons, uh, hydrogens attached to carbons, but we are supposed to show this methyl group on the second carbon. If it's confusing, first go ahead and number the carbons, six carbons, six carbons. And where is the methyl group on the second carbon? So feel free to put it on the bottom or on the top, straight or not straight, doesn't matter. So a line shows that there is a CH3C with three carbons, uh, with three hydrogens that we do not show. All right, I believe you can do the second practice, writing the condensed formula. I already have worked on it with you in the previous video. So you shouldn't have any problem with the second one. Let's go to the last practice, it's still working on page 17. Um, there is a point about the cyclic compounds. This is the first time you're dealing with cyclic compounds, so I would like to mention this point. Uh, the question is asking, draw the line by the structure for the following the skeletal structures. Uh, then build uh, one of them with your model kit if you have them available. If not, don't worry about them. Um, all right, so about cyclic compounds, we said in the skeletal structure, carbon atoms are on the angles. So how many carbon atoms do you see here? Five. Do we show the hydrogens? No, but they exist. So build a ring with five carbons, okay? Your line bond structure should represent a ring, right? So you're not allowed to write them. Don't expect me to tell you, okay, this is the correct structure. No, it's absolutely wrong because it's not going to show any ring. They have to be in a circle to show a ring. Now, don't forget that your line bond structure should show the complete octet on each carbon. Each carbon is connected to other carbons via two bonds, so you need two more bonds, means two more hydrogens. These are all hydrogens. Don't forget to put the hydrogens. You might say, okay, this question is asking for for the line bond structure, how about the condensed formula? Learn something right now. Rings do not have condensed, oops, this marker is dying, condensed formula. Because you remember for the condensed formula, you have to write you have to try to uh, write these CH, uh, C and H groups in a compressed form. How are you going to show a compressed form and cyclic at the same time? So there is no way we can have a condensed formula for a ring. This is extremely important learning. So it seems like dealing with the rings is, uh, is easier, right? So <clears throat> you work it for the other cyclic compound and let's move on to page 18. Page 18 uh, is asking us if these two uh, molecules in the, uh, each pair are identical or are isomers. Do you remember the uh, definition for isomers? They are the molecules with the same formula but different arrangement of atoms. So if we want to work on A, we have CH3, CH2, CHBr, and CH2Br, and B is CH2Br, CHBr, CH2, CH3. Okay, so this is the first time you see uh, an atom except, car except carbon and hydrogen in the molecule. So whenever you see a halogen like bromine or chlorine, means that they are attached actually to carbons, okay? They are actually attached to the carbons, to the previous carbons. So 
As if like, you can draw this as CH2, CH, Br. And if you look at it, it makes sense because by doing this, you are completing the octet on these carbons, correct? CHBr and CH2Br. Now, the other car uh, compound B is CH2Br. Then what do you have? CH and Br. CH2 and CH3. Now, look at these two molecules. Is it look? Uh, I mean, doesn't it look like uh, as if you have a mirror here? And you're looking at the image of this compound on the other side. So, this seems like they're identical. They're just flipped in the mirror. So, these two compounds are identical. The arrangement, the, the formulas are the same. Both have four carbons, two, uh, two bromine and the rest are hydrogens. And the arrangement is the same exactly. Carbon, I mean, uh, carbon number one and carbon number two have the bromines, carry the bromines. Let's go to B, I mean to the second uh, pair, they're both and. Second pair OH here, CH3, and for B, OH here, and CH3. So from the first look, they might look the same, but I want you to always, if you see different groups, always uh, number your carbons. In A, seems like OH is on the first carbon, CH3 is on the second carbon, but in B, OH is on the first carbon, but look at CH3, CH3 is on the third carbon. So they have the same formulas, but different arrangements of atoms, so they are isomers, they are not identical. And finally, the third one, A has four carbons, it's a simple butane, right, remember? If you don't remember the names, don't worry. We have naming in the future chapters. So, all right. This is a very confusing uh, scenario since most of the students uh, confuse them. They say they are isomers while they are identical. Why? Because you have one, two, three, and four, and carbon number four is attached to carbon number three, right? And what do you have here? One, two, three, and four. So it seems like somebody has pushed carbon number four a little bit off. It's like folded. It's like the 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 um, uh, book pages that are folded a little bit, the dog-eared ones. So as if like no, carbon number four is a little bit folded to the top, it's not completely straight, but this is exact same compound. They are both uh, butane, so they are identical. I wouldn't bother to go over the next practice, drawing 18 structural isomers of CFH18 at this point, <clears throat> because I want you to go back on the, uh, that one uh, as soon as you learn how to name. That makes uh, working on this uh, exercise much, much easier. I don't want it to be painful, huh? Okay, let's move to page 19. And... We are drawing the Lewis and skeletal structures for the following molecules. CH2O formaldehyde. Don't worry about the name, we're just providing an FYI. Okay, so if you draw the Lewis structure and 
you will find you have this list of structure, you definitely are right. And this is a line bundle structure. And for, for uh, uh, this is line bond. Now for a skeletal, you can just say this, right? So literally there is no skeletal structure for this. Because in a skeletal structure, we're not supposed to show the hydrogens just show carbon and any other atoms attached to carbons. But uh, if you just don't show the carbon either, it doesn't make sense. It's like equals to O or equals to zero. It might be confusing. So we are not going to show it well. C2H4O2 is called acetic acid. If you draw this structure, I'm not going to go over the how to draw the loose structures. Then you will have CH3, CO, and O H. Now this one you can tell that you can draw the skeletal structure because you have two carbons here. Acetone, I'm sorry, this is not a, uh, yes, yes, this is acetic acid. So you have two carbons, one and two. The second one is attached to what? To O H, huh? We said anything attached to carbon but hydrogen is shown so carbon oxygen one single one and there is a carbon oxygen double one right so it shows ch3 cooh it shows two carbons and the rest of the molecule now i want you to work on the other two on acetone and benzene and let me know if you have any question the next practice on still on page 19 is a nice practice. I like it. Uh, you go from converting the condensed formula to a Lewis structure. Uh, what makes you powerful and strong in organic chemistry is to go, I mean, work forward and backwards at the same time. Like go from Lewis structure to condensed and skeletal and vice versa. So this is a different practice. Um, let's work on A and D. Okay. If you don't have to work on A and D, you can work on B and C. I, my suggestion is that when you are watching these videos, feel free to pause the video, work on it, give it a try before you're looking at what I work, and then check your work with me. That helps a lot. And don't be afraid of making mistakes, please. All right. Okay, so we are basically interpreting the condensed formulas to uh, the Lewis structures that we have done before. So CH3, you put the CH3 or if you want to be more specific, CH3. Now, CH2 in parentheses shows we need to repeat it. How many times? Four times. One, two, three, and four. Stop. What comes after it? A CH. What else is hanging to this carbon? Two CH3 groups. So, at this point, you may ask, uh, okay, you said CH3 in parentheses shows the branch, but how come it's not a branch? Because it's at the end of the molecule. It, at the same time that we, it looks like a branch, but it's the final or terminal carbon, one of them, right? And D is, ooh, such a big molecule. I know, but we don't like the size of the molecules here. They all have the same precision. Checking my molecule one more time. All right, now we are ready. What do you see here? A CH with two groups attached as branches. So your CH here 
thin as CH2OH and as CH2OH or you can say CH2OH, okay? I, you remember I told you it's uh, the meaning is that carbon is attached to carbon, but even if you write it as this, it's okay. Now, what we have here, CH2 in parentheses means repeat CH2 three times. CH2 one, CH2 two, CH2 three. All right, so H, H, and H, and then you'll have if I forget to put one of the hydrogens, you definitely put it. I'm just in rush to, for the video not to be too long. Then you will have a carbon. What do you have in parentheses? CH3 uh, means they are the branches. One coming off, one coming down. Then you'll have a CH2 and then CH3. Okay. Pause the video anytime you want and practice. Let's work on the second practice on page 20. How many hydrogen atoms are present around each highlighted carbon atom in the following molecules? That's a good question because uh, it makes your visualization better about uh, about skeletal structure. This is practice two, okay? So, this is the first one. So instead of, uh, highlights that you have in your study guide. Let me show them with another color. So we are supposed to show the number of hydrogen. Oops, we have a double bond here. And there is another carbon here to the left hand. Right? So we have one, two, three, four carbons to determine their number of hydrogens. It's very easy. You are supposed to just see the invisible hydrogens. How do you know it? Because uh, if this is a carbon, it's already attached to oxygen, right? So out of four bonds, one of them is taken. So you have three hydrogens, right? And you know that we are not allowed to show them in skeletal structures. Here, one, two, three, and four, because we count the double bonds. So this carbon is already full. So it does not have any more hydrogens. Uh, how about this one here? Uh, one, I'm sorry, I have made a mistake here. I think I was going to, all right. We have one, two, three. So this is the hydrogen missing. So this carbon has one hydrogen. And finally, this carbon, look, one, two, three bonds are shown. So the fourth one is an invisible hydrogen. That's how you determine the hydrogens. Now, based on this, you, are, uh, you can work on avobenzene, uh, the second molecule. All right. Let's practice three. Um, I would rather to work on A and C. So we are supposed to show it, to show the structure as a complete structure with all the carbons and hydrogens and if there is any lone pair of electrons. So let's work on A. What do you see? The carbons exist at the angles and at the end of the lines, right? So we have one, two, three, four, all right? How many, you just work on the number of hydrogens and here you have carbons. So how many carbon, how many hydrogens should be sticking to this carbon if it already has two bonds? I'm sure you will say. 
say to here the same same this carbon is already full with four bonds so don't touch it this carbon has one bond so it has three hydrogens attached and the same story for this carbon okay now let's work on b no not b sorry let's work on d d the, it has nitrogen and you haven't worked on so many examples like that so nitrogen a hydrogen bond is normally shown as this without the bond so get used to it now the same thing you will see carbon exists here so it has three hydrogens attached to it right so let's let's change carbon nitrogen and this is definitely carb right carbon carbon nitrogen hydrogen and a carbon now how many bonds do we need on this carbon obviously three this carbon also three this nitrogen nitrogens do not have full so four full single bonds so what you have on nitrogen instead of a single bond is the rest is uh, non-bonding electron pairs but again for carbons you have two hydrogens carbon you have two bonds now you need two hydrogens nitrogen again i told you more than three bonds the rest is going to be non-bonding electron pairs and you will have here three hydrogens because carbon is attached to one nitrogen so that's how you go from skeletal structure to a line bond structure and uh, finally, after working on all of these, we are ready to uh, know a little bit more about when the atoms are charged, uh, basically going back to the same uh, concept of formal charges. So, saying that if a carbon is positive means that a hydrogen is missing like like a we normally should have four bonds attached to carbon right so if there is a positive charge the formal charge has been calculated from the formula for formal charge what was the formula for formal charge the the number of valence electrons in free atom which is carbon here minus how many lines three lines plus dots how many dots do you see here nothing so it's zero so what would be the formal charge positive one that you put here it's not that difficult if you have a carbon and with a negative charge it means the hydrogen is missing but there is a lone pair of electrons something like what you see in part B. So if you have negative charge means a hydrogen is missing, so it has only one hydrogen, three bonds, but a lone pair, I mean, it means the hydrogen, the fourth, the second hydrogen has gone and it's left is non-bonding electrons on the carbon, all right? We will learn more about this. We are preparing you for the reactions. Like, yeah, so you can work on the rest. And you can definitely draw the formula, molecular formula for these ions. Like, let's say if you want to draw the formula for, let's work on A. It's going to be how many carbons do you have around the, around the ring? Six. So put a ring of six carbons together as long as it's a pretty ring. Okay. And then to each of these should be two hydrogens attached. 
and to this one, to this carbon, you have a CH3. Okay, so the, your uh, carbon carries a positive charge means there is a bond missing. problem is uh, problem it says for problem 127 use the formal charge to draw to draw in the lone pairs on each nitrogen or oxygen atom in the following so you just need to determine the formal charges sounds like it so which one do you want to work on let's work on a So let's determine what's going on here. Formal charge. For nitrogen, it's in group five, right? Five minus, how many bonds do you see around it? Four plus how many dots? Zero. So the charge is positive one on this nitrogen. Here, five minus one, two, three plus zero, right? So can have a positive two charge here on nitrogen. So whenever you have three bonds on nitrogen, the last one don't insist on a bond. There is a non-bonding electron pair on it. So let's not worry about it. And okay, let's work on C also. As the last one working on this type. So, although they're not shown, but you have these, okay? All right, so let's determine the I think it's, uh, okay. All right, so for nitrogen, again, you have five minus four plus one, so there is a positive charge. For oxygen, the number of valence electrons in free oxygen is six. So six minus two plus four, zero. So there is no charge here. For this oxygen is six plus one, six minus one plus six, it's negative one. It's just the same formula of the formal charges. Okay. Now, I'm sure you can work on the last practice on page 21. We draw the, the skeletal structures for A and B and uh, condensed structures for molecules in part C and D. You have already worked on everything. So in the last part of uh, this chapter, you have uh, to determine the polarity of the bond. You had it before in general chemistry one and a little bit in two but I give you some time to digest what you had about these structures. So we're going to specifically work on polarity of organic molecules.